very least, visit my club. It would make me really happy. Please? Say, um... Well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? I say, sure, I guess I can check this out. Ah, awesome. You're really sweet, Snake, you know that? I say, it's nothing, really. She says, shall we go, then? I'll look for the material some other time. You're more important. Alright, I want to do a quick save. Oh. Oh, they wrote... They, they erased all my saves. I was thinking about saving and loading to see what would happen, but they, uh... They already kind of... They took care of that for me, didn't they? How far back can I go? Not that far back. Hmm. Well, now I know that I'm not, uh... Yeah. I'm, I'm on a path. I can't, I can't go back. There's no going back now. Uh... And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. There was a similar phrase about selling my soul. I timidly follow Monica across the room, across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third-year classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, swings on, open the classroom door. That... That also seems... Wasn't that a Sayori trait? Didn't Sayori swing on the door? She says, I'm back, and I brought a guest with me. Girl 1 says, eh? A, a guest? Girl 2 should, says, seriously, you brought a boy? Would it kill the atmosphere? She says, don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club, Snake. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. Girl Natsuki says, so let me guess. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? I say, wah? No, I'm not. Yuri says, Natsuki. The girl with the sour attitude, who, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. Anyway, says Monica, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, the vice president. Not Sayori. Yuri says, it's nice to meet you. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. I say, yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. Monica says, so, I ran into Snake in a classroom and I decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Natsuki says, wait, Monica. Didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was going to, well, you know. Monica says, sorry, sorry. Oh, we don't get cupcakes. Monica says, I didn't forget that, but I just, ha but I just happened to run into him. Yuri says, in that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Monica says, yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down, Snake? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. I wonder... I wonder if there's more than four people. Because everyone's acting like there's only three. But what if there was actually more than four to begin with? That's interesting. Monica says, so, I know you didn't really plan on coming here. But we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the literature club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I say, I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. She says, you could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? She says, well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these two. These two. Yuri returns to a table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot in the middle. I say, you keep a whole tea set in this classroom? She says, don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? I say, I guess. Monica laughs. Don't let yourself get intimidated, Yuri's just trying to impress you. She says, eh? That's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know. I believe you, I say. Well, 
Tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. She says, I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, Snake, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. I say manga. I wonder, is there a way to... One second. Some of this dialogue we've definitely seen. So I wonder if we can speed up in some fashion. I guess we'll let it slide for now. If this happens more than once, I'll definitely look into it. That's Oki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Yuri says, not much of a reader, I guess. I say, well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? She says, well, let's see. She traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. Snake the background. Oh, fuck! How the fuck didn't I see that? That blends in perfectly. But you know, I like a lot of things. Hey Yuri, you wanna turn around? Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. I say, ah, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp something that I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri may as well have been having a conversation with a rock. Monica interrupts. I'd expect that from you, Yuri. It suits your personality. Yuri says, is that so? Really, if a story makes me think, or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Natsuki says, ugh, I hate horror. Yuri says, oh, why's that? Natsuki says, well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind, she says. Monica says, that's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? She says, what? What gives you that idea? Monica says, you left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... Natsuki says, don't say it out loud. And give that back. Fine, fine, says Monica. I say, Natsuki, you wrote over your own... You write your own poems. Eh? Well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I say, I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No, she says. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. I say, ah, not a very competent writer yet. Yuri says, I understand how Natsuki feels. Showing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Monica says, do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Yuri sags. I say, I guess it's the same for Yuri. We all sit in silence for a moment. Monica says, hey, I got an idea. How about this? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Natsuki says, um... Monica continues, I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Yuri says, well, I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I did decide to take on the responsibility of vice president, after all. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. Besides, now that we have a new member, it seems like a good step for us to take. Do you agree as well, Snake? Oh, alright. I'm gonna skip past this part, because it's just me. All three girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. Monica says, I guess I need to tell you the truth, Snake. The thing is, we don't have enough members yet to form an official club. We need four, and I've been trying really, really hard to find new members. And if we don't find one more before the festival, 
I, I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? I would feel terrible for letting everyone down in this situation. And besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed. So, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls, say write. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Monica says, oh my goodness, really? Do you really mean that, Snake? I say, yeah. It could be fun, right? <laughs> no consequences whatsoever. Yuri says, you really did scare me for a moment. Natsuki says, I mean, if you really just left after all this, I would be super pissed. Monica says, Snake, I'm so happy. We can, we can become an official club now. Thank you so much for this. You're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? Say, ah, thanks, I guess. Monica says, okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone, remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Snake, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. She giggles. I say, yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. I say, I guess I'll be on my way then. Monica says, okay. I'll see you tomorrow then. I can't wait. With that, I depart the club room and make my way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls. Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Oh, I've unlocked a special poem. Of course I'd like to read it. Today I cut my skin open for the first time. It was exhilarating. I think I understand how blank feels now. I'm supposed to be the responsible one, though, so I don't think I'll be doing it again unless I decide to kill myself. I left a memento of the occasion below. That that almost looks like photorealistic blood. Or like... This looks like a photo of blood smeared across a piece of paper. Oh boy. That's a, that's a good special occasion. Okay, so we're missing somebody. Uh, well, we're still on the Yuri path, technically. So let's just keep going with her. Mm. Let's see if we can get every single one for her. Uh, secretive... I realize I should be saying these out loud, not just effulgent, intellectual. Mm. Vertigo? Yep, Vertigo. Uh, hmm. Something more complicated, I guess? No, love is... Complicated and simple at the same time. I'm gonna say meager. Yep. Vibrant. Imagination. Incongruent. Existence. Oof. Gotta avoid those bad words. Desire. I don't think waterfalls for her. Vitality. Oh, this one's tough. What do we want to do here? Pink extreme. I mean, extreme isn't the bad word in and of itself. Oh, thanks, Sparky. Thanks for following. Photo wheelist, yes. Thank you. 
<laughs> one ending you get for choosing words like milk. I hope that's not a thing. Uh, okay, I'm trying extreme. Okay, good. It's not extraordinary. That one's definitely not it. It's not fantasy. The same memories? Damn it! We almost had it! Tenacious. 19 out of 20. Monica says, hi again, Snake. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. I say, ah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last one to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Oh. Oh, the picture's gone. The picture's gone back there. Yuri says, thanks for keeping your promise, Snake. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Jesus. Natsuki says, go, oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. You already had to be dragged here by Monica. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Ah. Uh, Mon Monica, you're... Mm, you're on the wrong... Natsuki, certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps a manga collection in a club room. Mm, Natsuki says, mmm, mmm, mmm. Natsuki finds herself stuck between Monica and Manga. Manga is literature, she says. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops into her seat. Yuri says, I'm sorry, Snake. We'll make sure to put your comfort first, okay? Yuri shoots at Natsuki with a disappointed glance. Hey, Yuri, if you could make Monica not go in front of the text, and if you could keep your face... Your face. That would be great. That would make me feel really comfortable. Yuri says, anyway... Now that you're in the club and all, perhaps you might have an interest in picking up a book to read. I say, well, I can't really say no either way. Like you said, I'm in the club now. So it only feels right for me to do something like that, if you ask. Yuri says, wait, I didn't mean it like that. If you don't really want to, then forget I said anything, I guess. I say, ah, no, it's not that, Yuri. I want to try to be a part of this club. So even if I don't read often, I'd be happy to pick up a book if you wanted me to. She says, are you sure? I just felt like, well, as vice president and all, that I should help you get started on something you might like. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. She says, I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might, that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This, this is. How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like despite me not reading much. I say, Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew, she says. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, and we can take a look at the background carefully. I don't, I don't see anything. I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression. Like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah, she says, crap. I think she noticed me by looking at her. She seeks another glance at me. Okay, it won't let me skip this. This is actually not skippable. A control is apparently the button. I guess because there are... Technically, I haven't seen this path. I think is how that works. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in the book. Sorry, I say. I was just spacing out. I mutter this, sensing that I made her uncomfortable. She says, oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... I say, that's the book you gave me, right? She says, mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. I say, just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? She says, ah, well, when I started the bookstore yesterday... Ah, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. I see, I say. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I say, I'll definitely start reading it soon. She says, I'm glad to hear. 
Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. I say, is that so? What's the story about, anyway? Well, she says, mm, look at the cover of the book. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. The book hasn't changed. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Basically, says Yuri, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison. And the people chopped over there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. Ah, uh, this isn't the same. But the facility gets even worse. And they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to. She says, oh, that might be a bit of a spoiler. That That's all fucking new. But anyway, I'm really into it. The book, I mean. Not the thing about the limbs. I say that's kind of... It's kind of dark, isn't it? You made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came out of nowhere. Ah, she says. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Snake? I say, no, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. She says, I hope so. Because this book is pretty fucked up. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. Why would I say that? Why would I say that I forgot she's into those things when I wouldn't know? She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. She says, it's just that this kind of story. It's the kind that challenges you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people and we're all worthless anyway. Then suddenly, I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. Oh, that's really good. I say, hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, she says, I guess it's all right then. <laughs> but I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When not things like books and writing fill my thoughts, my whole body gets in... Sorry. What, what was that? I'm gonna... We want to reload that. Hmm. We're just going to try and read that again. We're going to load our other save to make sure... Oh, well, whatever. Uh, I actually don't know who we're going to get now. All right, we're close. She has this problem. Okay, there. W I actually read pretty much everything there was to read. I kind of forget to pay t attention to other people, she says. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. I say that's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. She says, ah, uh, that's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? Whoa. Yes, she says Yuri. I mean, you don't have to, but... I laugh. What are you saying? Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieve the book that I had put into my bag. All right, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah, she says. Yeah. Are you sure, I ask. You seem to be a little apprehensive. She says, that's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see, I say. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. All right, she says. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. She says, sorry. I was just bathing in the feeling of your body heat. Uh, <laughs> I say, Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? And you say, get black weird words once in a while, too. It's, it's different. She says, I do. I need to save more. I'm just going to keep saving. I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... I laugh. Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk up and 
I slap my desk until it's up against Yuri's, and then hold my book more between the two of them. She says, ah, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each le lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is, all is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Say, ah, I guess that makes it a little difficult to turn the page. Here, says Yuri. So this isn't something we noticed last time. What the fuck is up with the drawing? Why are their ears so f bad? Wh why? They could have just covered it, but instead they made... It's like it's drawn by a different artist. And I'm honestly wondering if that's intentional and we should be paying attention to that. Like... Look at the rest of the room. Look at the rest of her. Her fingers are fine. Like, the the hair, everything's meticulous. Her face is fine. But the ear is so distinctly wrong. I... I it's It's gotta be intentional, because they could not have missed that. No one in their right mind would say, Yeah, the face, hand, yeah, the ear, perfect. That's... That's to code, right there. I don't believe that. Okay. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah, I say. I do the same thing with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. She says, are you ready? I say, eh? To turn the page, she continues. I say, ah, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted there for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again, and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. She says, ah, uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? You're a small child. I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Oh, she's looking at us. Yeah, I say, thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. As we, cont uh, we continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own, her own thumb. Hey, Yuri, I ask. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Eh, she says. No, I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not. Is that a new fa- I don't remember that face. Really, she says. Or I say. I was just thinking at the way she second guesses the things she says and all that. Ah, she says. That's what you were talking about. Sorry. I thought you meant something else about her. Something else, I ask? Never mind, she says. That face is really goofy. We didn't even get that far yet. So I don't know why that came into my head. This is new. This is new. She laughs maniacally. Yuri, are you feeling all right? She says, eh? Yuri's been a little fidgety ever since we started reading. I say, you can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... My breathing, she asks? She puts her hand on her chest as if to feel her heartbeat. I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine. I just need some water. I say, all right, don't push yourself. Whoa, that was... That ended very differently than before. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out of the classroom. What on earth was that about, I ask? Monica says, Snake, did something happen just now? I say, eh? I have no idea. Yuri was acting a little strange, I guess. Monica says, so you don't know anything? Sorry, I can't say that I do, I respond. Are you worried about her? Oh, no, not really. I was just making sure you didn't do anything to her. I say, no, nothing. She laughs. Don't worry. Don't worry. I believe you. Silly. Because I'm pulling the strings. I mean, I'm normal. Monica continues. Yuri just does this sometimes, so it's nothing alarming. I say, all right, if you say so. Monica continues. Anyway, why don't we start with sharing our poems with each other? I say, eh? Shouldn't we wait for Yuri? I say, well, she might be a while, so I just figured we'd get started without her. Is that okay? I say, yeah, I was just asking. I stand up. Make a mental note of where I left off in the book, and then slip it into my bag. Huh, we're down to two. I'll start with Natsuki. I told Natsuki I was interested in her poems yesterday. It's probably only fair if she, if I shared mine with her first.
What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god! 